Welcome to the SDR Disco Call Podcast, a podcast designed for brand new sales development reps in the world of software as a service. Every Tuesday, we're going to be bringing you a new guest who's still in the role to share how or why they've gone into sales development, what have they learned in their SDR career and journey to date, and what three pieces of information would they like to share back to new and existing reps to help them become happy sellers. Every show is transcribed, recorded with links from the guests, which are available at happyselling.io forward slash podcast. I'm going to be your host, Neil Buyan, and I look forward to taking you into the world of sales development through the SDR Disco Call podcast. Hi there, gang, and welcome to episode 15 of the SDR Disco Call podcast, a podcast designed for brand new sales development reps. Today's guest is Nia Woodhouse, who's an SDR from Refract. This show was recorded back in October 2020, where we're going to be learning about Nia's phone first approach, getting used to being in front of a video camera, what it means to her to be an ethical seller, flipping growing pains working in a startup and turning them into opportunities, and how to build your own personal brand. So with that in mind, let's begin. Guys, thank you for joining the Happy Selling SDR Disco Call podcast today. We've got a top winner uh, uh, guest on the show today. We have Nia Woodhouse, who is an SDR from Refract. Uh, I was introduced uh, to Nia by Mark Ackers through Refract. So Mark, if you're listening in, thank you so much for the introduction. Nia, how are you doing today? Hi, Neil. I'm fab. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. It's so exciting for me. Thank you for joining. Um, so, Nia, for the listeners that can hear you but can't see you, kind of where are you from? Uh, kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and what are you doing at Refract today? Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm Nia. I work for a company called Refract and we're based in the Northeast. I'm originally from Manchester, but moved to the Northeast for uni. Um, I had the best three years of my life studying biology um, in such a fab party city. And then when I graduated, I pretty much straight away joined at Refract um, where I've been an SDR for the past two years and it's been amazing and um, so many opportunities um, when I'm not SDR in I'm probably yoga in um, and that fills up most of my time so yeah it's been an amazing two years. Thank you so much for your introduction. Um, And as mentioned, when we met, obviously, I did my SDR homework, checked out your LinkedIn, and I saw a journey from working at uh, working within sales at O2, uh, working within retail, and then coming through to refract. Um, And it'd be great to jump into your story. But how do you go from kind of like biology, studying biology to then, you know, coming into sales? Like, how do you what's the kind of big difference that you've seen since you, you made those choices? Yeah, that's definitely a question I get asked a lot of. And I can see why it's sometimes a bit of a bizarre change. And I absolutely love my degree and I did it because I loved it. Um, But I knew that I didn't want to work in a lab. Um, And I just loved being around people. Like you said, I had some part-time jobs, some of them involved sales. Um, And then it just sort of made sense for me post-uni to have my first full-time job in sales where I was working in a team um, and I could take the things that I loved about my degree, more of the social aspects and use that for my profession. Love it. Thank you. And do you know what, when you said like, you don't really want to work in a lab, um, I was actually thinking about this the other day where as SDRs, we are currently working in labs. We're working <laughs> in labs of sales, right? Because we're doing experimentation, A-B testing, trying to get results. We are kind of like data scientists to see um, when will a prospect say yes okay I'm gonna have a look you know Mm -hmm. um but no I I I love that story and it'd be great to know so like kind of like you've come out of university you said that you're going into like jobs walk us through the journey of the like the type of jobs and roles that you did Nia um so whilst I was at university my part-time roles um yeah so since I was 16 I worked in retail I've always been um quite happy to have a part-time job I loved the social aspect of it it meant that I had like different pockets of friends that I could go out with um and I worked for Arcadia Group for 
a few years being Wallace and Miss Selfridge and I loved the people that I worked with I loved the job um, and a customer facing role and then when I moved to Newcastle I got a part-time job at O2 which was similar in terms of the social aspect of it and being customer facing but different in terms of um, I had more of a personal target uh, for the sales that I was doing rather than a team target that I was used to um, and yeah. that so I was held accountable for that target and then that went to a store target as well so I really enjoyed that it was a new experience for me um, to be targeted on different things personally and to allow my competitive side to come out um, I know you'll probably mention this I am very competitive sometimes it's a bit ridiculous especially yeah. at Christmas when the board games come out um, <laughs> but especially with myself, I'm the most competitive, um, not necessarily with other people, but mm. I'm always striving to just do a little bit better. That's really good. And, and it's admirable to be that way. Um, and when people say like they, they like to be competitive, I can either take it two ways. Like you said, it could either be because we're against somebody, I want to be the best or some people because they just want to better themselves. They want to improve. Kind of what is your motivation for like, you know, having that competition in yourself what, what motivates you to keep being competitive it's a good question I think I'm quite aspirational and I th I know when I had my interview for refract um my head of sales asked me a similar question mm. and I think that's why I went into sales because there's no limit on how well you can do um you can always be striving to do a little bit better and especially with refract you can see the direct impact that that has on the company and um, mm. so that was a big motivator for me as well I love it so kind of having that motivation within yourself seeing the outcome of the hard work that you put in you can see like you say a direct correlation as to how the business is being successful and then in yourself and I think that's really cool um, and a question that I, I wanted to ask uh, is a lot of us we get into sales because we want to learn the art of selling we want to you know make perhaps commission travel meet new people what kind of non-sales skills would you like to learn whilst in your sales career um Sometimes it's difficult to answer that because a lot of non-sales skills work well in sales. Mm. So, for example, um, meeting new people and being able to hold conversations with people that you've never met before, those sorts of communication skills, whilst people might not necessarily have them in like the criteria for a great salesperson straight away, definitely interlinks with sales later on down the line. Um, so that's definitely something that I would say is non-salesy at the beginning, but works in your career later on. Definitely, definitely. And I think like with myself, like when I was learning to SDR and, you know, doing sales stuff, um, a lot of things that I learned in sales, I was then able to take into personal life as well. So how to handle objections at a family dinner table, <laughs> uh, how to convince somebody into your kind of idea of doing things. Um, and also outside of work, I do a bit of music and I have to kind of sell myself as like a, a club host. So understanding how to speak to a GM to say, look, I'm going to get you a return of investment. I'm going to bring all these ravers in. We're going to have a great night and we're going to continue to do this each month, month in, month out. Um, and obviously these are things that we can learn from sales. And that's why I always think sales is a wicked profession to get into because I don't think it's just about closing or convincing somebody to buy. There are so many other elements like marketing, tech, um, obviously with customer success, making customers happy. And I think being at the SDR seat at the table, you get to see all these different positions working with each other. Um, and like you said, it's really cool where you can have a direct impact into the company and helping them grow. I think these are really cool things to learn. So as mentioned, like you're working at the the O2 store, it's kind of like team, uh, individual targets versus like team targets that you're used to. Kind of what happened after O2 and what was the journey like there, Nia? Um, so after O2, I think I went back to Miss Selfridge for a few months just before um, the end of university. And then when I graduated, I had a really amazing month in Thailand with my sister. We traveled around Thailand. It was absolutely amazing. Um, mm. I love traveling and I wasn't too sure on what 
oh, like if I was going to be okay with traveling. So I thought I'd just dip my toe for a month and then had the best time ever um, and came back and began my job search. And th- so this element I'm hearing that you, you like to travel, you like the social aspect of your career with current situations being what they are like mm-hmm. how are you dealing with the social element like with refract or like you know currently with friends and stuff and how do you because i can see with some sdrs they are a bit disconnected because they are working from home how are you kind of like dealing with that at the moment i am taking absolutely every opportunity to get on zoom speak to my colleagues and um, we're doing stomped over at the minute so we're Ooh. um it can be easy to just stay inside and not do exercise. And I'm quite an active person um, and really promote that healthy lifestyle as well. So we're doing as a company, um, getting out and we're competing in teams of how far you can walk this month. And then we're doing like walking meetings, that sort of thing, or even just having a chat on your lunch or in the morning and catching up with your colleagues, because I I absolutely loved being at a desk with my colleagues and really got on with everyone at Refract. So it's important to really stay connected. Um, And obviously the lockdown situation changes so rapidly, but when I can, I'm doing going out and meeting friends for socially distanced walks, that sort of thing. But you're so right. It's so important to stay connected and actually doing Zooms here and there, even if you're just um, doing power hours, for example, on the phone, um, having people up, just have a little chat in between calls or to be on the phone and on Zoom at the same time, it's really good to stay connected and like keep those conversations flowing uh, with your colleagues, which I really, really enjoy. Love it. And that makes a hell of a lot of sense because one of your colleagues, Matt, who I speak with regularly, um, we were supposed to have a meeting the other day and he said, Neil, I just need to do go for my steps first and then I can <laughs> jump in for a call. And I was like, well, you can get your steps in. So now I, 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 exactly I know. exactly what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And um, he said, I'm, I'm kind of like in competition with the team. And I was like, okay, so... Uh, so what's that called? What would you guys call that? It's Stomptober. Stomptober. And I love you can it. imagine on the sales teams, we're always three miles ahead of the other teams. <laughs> ah, that makes sense. Um, I'll, I'll be uh, I'll be sure to check in with Matt to see kind of where he's at his his steps at the minute. Um, and as you mentioned, it's really important to like you say, jump on Zoom meetings, catch up with your work crew, etc. Um, what is it like as an SDR when you're speaking to prospects who are currently working from home? How do you like, you know, build rapport with them? Um, so I feel like since we've been locked down, it's been easier to reach your prospects over the phone. And I definitely adopt a phone first approach. Um, Mm. I just feel like it's the best way to get your personality across um, and have a conversation, um, there and then. So I think it's easier personally now than ever to connect with your prospects um, and to relate to them just starting that opening that conversation rather than going straight in for the meeting and I think Mm. it's weird in a way that it's these sorts of times that has led us down that conversation because people are more likely to be at home less likely to be on the move so they have got more time to chat. Mm. I agree and that's kind of like how we came about with this conversation I had a a lot of time where I spoke to great STRs such as yourself I learned so much and I think uh, like with me I have to kind of prospect to get guests on the show so I do have to do a bit of SDR work Mm -hmm. Um, and I always find like sending a couple of voice notes on LinkedIn initially connecting not going in for the meeting but just to mention I see that you're doing something quite cool in the world of SDRing and just wanted to know would you be interested in sharing your story and it takes a couple of messages. And then when I go in with a video message or a, with a voice note, they then think, okay, yeah, I'm going to have a chat with Neil. And I always see this with every guest is they come onto the initial Zoom with me and they're just like, who is this guy? I've never met him before. Kind of like, why am I here? Is he trying to give me a job or something? And then I walk them through the story with just a couple of slides. And by the end of it, just like yourself, they're like, yeah, I'm in. Um, but I, I've, I found it really cool just to connect with people and do it remote. But what are your tips like for people that, you know, they're not, they're a bit nervous getting on a camera or wanting to connect with an SDR through, uh, you know, through tech because it's not what they're used to? Yeah, definitely. I think probably start off with your colleagues then or with your family and friends and get used to, um, seeing yourself on camera and listening to yourself obviously I'm very used to that with the technology that I'm selling and very used to hearing my own voice Um, (laughs) so yeah start off with 
in your comfort zone with your colleagues and just get chatting um, and then maybe reach out using a uh, video for email prospecting and then you can <laughs> replay what you're saying make sure that your message is what you want to be saying but don't get too hung up on it the the main thing is to just get yourself out there and the more you do it the less self-conscious you're going to be maybe even post a few videos on LinkedIn um, and you're likely to get quite a lot of engagement through that um, so definitely I would start start in your comfort zone and then branch out to your prospects. I love that. I love that. Because it's something that um, with like my SDR students that I have, I always try to get them encouraged into the, the art of video prospecting and using video so much more engaging than a static bit of text or, you know, a, a picture, etc. And they're always like, oh, I don't like the sound of my voice. Oh, I don't want to be on camera. And I get it because it's an element of nerves. But I think you hit the nail on the head where you said, do it a few times in your comfort zone do it with your colleagues, like watch yourself. And I think then you'll be able to spot, mm, I don't like how I said that. I think I should say it in that way. And like you said, the more you do it, the more comfortable you come. And I have definitely seen a couple of videos in LinkedIn and you've got it like a Hollywood star, mate. So <laughs> well done on that. Um, exactly what that you said um, with SDRs, maybe not feeling confident about hearing their own voice or um, seeing themselves on video. But the aim of their profession is to book meetings and get those engagements. And if this is the best way to do it, I personally think it's a great way because you show in your prospect, your personality, and you can get your message through down to a T in a couple of minutes. Um, and you're likely to shorten that cycle of backwards and forwards. So uh, definitely try it because it's going to end up making you more successful. That's the advice that I would give. Love it. I think that's some solid advice. And I think another thing to add on that, I'm, I'm always saying to some SDRs, I'm like, kind of, where do you want to get to, like, after this SDR piece? And a lot of the time they'll say to me, because I want to go into a closing role, I want to become an account executive, or perhaps I want to go into customer success. And I'm like, well, you're going to have to, like, speak to your customer at some point. You're going to have to, like, be in front of them either on a camera or face to face in the near future. So I said, you need to get comfortable with this. And this is the best time to kind of make mistakes, you know? Uh, get those nerves out so I think you've given solid advice guys so if you're listening in practice do it in front of your mirror do it in front of your camera or if you've got technology like uh, Nia has uh, see yourself in action <laughs> so, um, so obviously like going through like how did you come across Refract and how did you guys get introduced Nia? Yeah um, so before Refract I had no idea what SAS was at all um, I didn't really know the role of an SDR either. I'd obviously had experience in sales, but not the sort of um, tech SaaS setup where you would have SDRs, BDRs and AEs, that sort of thing. Um, so I went through a recruitment company and obviously had a smaller sort of company intake that I was looking at because I was looking at the Northeast rather than bigger cities. Um, and I had a couple of interviews, but definitely the one that stuck out for me was Refract because um, I interviewed with our CEO and our head of sales and what they were talking about, their ethos about Refract just really made sense to me. They were talking more about the science of selling rather than the art of selling and you've either got it or you don't. Um, mm -hmm. And that definitely resonated with me as a scientist and a bit of a nerd anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, and it wasn't just that, it was everything about um, the CEO and head of sales. We just aligned on values, ethical selling, um, and really you could tell that they valued the SDR. You weren't just an entry-level salesperson. They knew how important it was for the company because if you don't have meetings, then you can't make sales. And if you can't make sales, then you can't grow the company. So it's super important. And that's why I really like drum down on the fact that salespeople shouldn't undervalue themselves, that they are massively important to the company. Mm. Hallelujah. Hell yeah. I, I agree <laughs> with that. Um, you said uh, that's the thing. So like kind of uh, in the past few years, I've seen people have their spin and take on what sales is. And there's always this kind of like definition. It could either, you said it could be an art of selling, it could be a science of selling, it could be it's a process-driven 
kind of business. Mm -hmm. And I always kind of think to myself, and other people have even said, like, why is sales like the most underrated qualification? And why aren't people doing more about sales as, as a profession? And me personally, I think sales is a lifestyle thing. Uh, I don't really like to class it as either side. There's elements of science, there's processes, there's methodologies, but I think it's just under such a huge umbrella. It's just if you have a vision of something that can change or make uh, people's lives better, that's kind of what it is. That's what people are trying to do. They're trying to spread a message similar to how marketing and trying to evangelize and, you know, spread the word. And I remember like when I came across Refract for the first time, I was like, who are these guys? And they're based in Newcastle and they're a SaaS company and they're relatively new and they've got some cool logos against them. I was like, that's what I, I, I love. I fell in love with Refract as well. Um, and I uh, speak to your guys on a regular basis. And kind of when I went to them, do you know any top SDRs? They're like, yeah, we've got Nia. <laughs> you need to speak to her. So, um, but the other side of it is uh, when you were talking about like the values and kind of it aligns with how you foresee sales and, you know, what, what the company is doing. And you mm. said something really interesting there ethical selling that's the first time i've come across that uh that phrase like what does that mean oh, really? uh, could you like yeah um yeah i can explain what it means to me and that's yeah. that it's less about persuasion because i don't feel like we should be persuading anybody to do anything or um not being completely honest with your prospect i feel like we build more rapport with our prospects when we're completely honest with them. If you can get stumped on a cold call, if they say, oh, um, is this is this a sales call? Be like, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> it is a sales call. Um, it's about being completely honest and bringing your prospect along with you the whole way because we're trying to help them improve something that's going on in their business or solve a problem that they have. Um, so, that's how I see ethical selling, basically. It's um, bringing them along with where you're at and being completely honest at every part of the sales cycle. I 100% rate and salute that. <laughs> um, I agree. It's not about, like you say, trying to twist somebody's arm and try exactly. to pull the wall over their eyes to get yeah. them buy something or interested in something. And I love it. I, yeah, I used, to, <laughs> I used to get asked that question, like, is this a sales call? And I said, well, it may be a sales call, but... Um, uh, again, I want to try and figure out if this is actually something that you need. So that's why I'm calling because I'm working with somebody that works in a similar company or industry or I'm working with a similar persona um, and just being upfront and honest about it. And if they're not ready, just saying, yeah, look, well, look, I can still help you out. I can send you some links some resources to help you on your sales journey or sales enablement journey, et cetera. And I think that's prospects respect that when they know that you're being upfront and honest, then that's the best start time to kind of build that relationship. And again, why I always think the SDR position is the most important because you are the first line of defense for sales. You are that first face, that first voice. And I always believe that the sale or the success of the sale starts at the discovery or starts at the initial uh, interaction with your prospect. So, well, yeah, like I said, I love SDR. So that's why I think <laughs> it's, it's really important. Um, and recently, so obviously you've been working with Refract like for the last few years. Kind mm -hmm. of like, what have been your main highlights, would you say, whilst working with Refract in the past year or so? Um, probably seeing how far the company's gone from when I joined to now. It's been absolutely amazing to see the team grow in all aspects, uh, meet new people from all walks of the world that I just wouldn't have met before. So that's a massive highlight for me. I just feel so proud whenever somebody else gets hired, um, whenever there's a massive company milestone. Um, that's really exciting for me. Um, and probably just the opportunities that have opened up for me in terms of networking, um, growing my own personal brand, so it's probably less like pinpointed things, more an experience of a whole um, of that, growing that personal brand and seeing the, the company grow, definitely. That's really cool. And I think that's that's kind of like a key point that um, with SDRs, like if this is their first step into SaaS or perhaps they're thinking about going into an SDR role, um, the advice I always love to give them is don't just see this as a job where you come in, punch in nine to five, and then you just go home and then get a wage. This is like a career. This is an entry into a new world of the way that you live, the way that you work, etc. Um, and having that 
what do you call it, that heart or the love to see your company grow outweighs like, okay, if, did I hit my target? I, I want to see this company grow. I want to see the CEO take this vision, spread it to as many people. And like, you can feel proud to say that you have a helping hand in that. Um, but equally with a lot of startups, there are growing pains there. You can go from startup to scale up to then to an enterprise company. And I've experienced that a few times. Um, but I think the hardest thing for a lot of people is mindset of when things do change, like how do you adapt to new people coming on your territory, getting a bit smaller, your target accounts and your lists, uh, because more SDRs are joining the team. How do you best adapt with change as the company's grown near? Um, so you're right in, in definitely saying all of that, but it allows for opportunities to help your new colleagues to to grow and to become their own um and I think that's what I've enjoyed so much as the team's grown um my colleagues have given me the autonomy to help out new SDRs and um, share a few ideas get involved in coaching so for me it's not taking anything away it's just sort of added into the experiences that I've had um I've been involved in some of the hiring process which has been really exciting um and I've been coached by coaches when I'm coaching. So it's been all down the line, um, helping the new SDRs to get ramped and up and running. So it's just been a positive experience for me. And I think that would be my advice for other teams going through those changes. It's what can you take from the new experiences rather than what's been taken away from you. Um, and I think that comes with not being in direct competition with people at all times. It's what you can help with them is going to help the company. Um, so it's a team effort, definitely. I love that. I love that. And that does really resonate with me as somebody who's been a coach and like mm -hmm. coaches other people. I think there's um, a really cool quote by Dharma Shah or Dharmesha Shah. Uh, and they say that uh, success, uh, again, I'm paraphrasing here, but success lies in making the people that believe in you successful. So seeing SDRs come on board, they kind of look up to you for like help with coaching. Mm -hmm. And if you can really help them out and let help them become successful, that is such a, a rewarding experience. And to me, it outweighs money. I always say like, with I don't do this job for the money out of it. Like money is just a byproduct of the work that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But if I can see SDRs go on to become great AEs or I don't know, say VPs of marketing or CSMs, I think, and sitting back and thinking that person did it, they just needed a little bit of help and they got there. Mm -hmm. And that's really rewarding. So I love to hear that from you. Um, and yeah, if you can ever share any tips with me of how to like help out other SDRs, I'd be keen to definitely know. <laughs> so Nia, like um, when we were talking about building personal brand, um, I, I see you're somebody that's quite social on LinkedIn. I see quite a lot of cool videos and a lot of people like comment on your posts and like kind of uh, like, appreciate like your points of view and most recently I saw something with regards to like sales confidence and kind of be like the top 50 SDRs and I was like wow like congratulations and I saw all the team at Refract singing your praises as well like what was that whole thing about and like kind of why is it important for you? Yeah absolutely so sales confidence every year lists the top UK um, 50 SDRs and I just think it's such a great a thing to do to shed a positive light on these SDRs um, and it's great to see new faces on this year including my colleague John he placed um, in the 50 so that's really exciting and for me it's such an accolade I was so proud to place quite highly there um, and I think it's come about like you said from creating a personal brand and it's like what does that actually mean and for me it was definitely getting out there and networking whilst I'm based in Newcastle it was important for me to get amongst other SDRs in London so I'm lucky enough that um, my company really support that and would encourage me to do that and I've done that previously um, I love speaking to people so networking with other salespeople and finding out what they're doing differently has been really exciting for me um, and more recently it's been building the LinkedIn brand um, so I've put more things out for that might resonate with other SDRs. So it's not about pushing your company 100% on your LinkedIn posts. It's resonating with other SDRs. And I think that's what gets you noticed with things like that because people are not going to be reading your posts if you just 
um, plug in your, your company on every single one. It's about offering actionable tips um, and experiences. There's so many SDRs and sometimes they're like, oh, where do I start? And if you're mm. the one that's putting things out that's that resonates with them, you're going to build a, a bigger LinkedIn network. You're probably going to connect with their sales leaders as well if they're your prospect. So it's just a win-win situation for everyone, really. But yeah, it was really exciting to be nominated for that. Well, if, if anything, like I said before, congratulations. And, and you're right, it's a, it's a great accolade and something definitely to add um, to help build your brand on LinkedIn when people are connecting with you. Um, and again, it's something that caught my eye. So that was one of the reasons that I wanted to speak to you to kind of get this insight, get this insight. Mm-hmm. How is Nia doing this? Um, and you're right, like networking with other SDRs, I think is the most beautiful thing that's happening more recently during COVID. Um, because again, having the opportunity to speak to people such as yourself, I'm learning so much and I am taking actionable insights because I have to remember what I learned 10 years ago is not necessarily always relevant to today. And equally, like kind of like what we were doing in prospecting before lockdown kicked off, that stuff changes. It changes on a regular basis. As you said, even with COVID and everything happening, it's constantly changing. So the way that we're reaching and connecting with people um, should also adapt and change as well. And I think you said a really key piece there. It's not just about plugging your company away and away. Obviously, you want to promote the company's brand because you work for them, but you want to able to connect with people uh, to show that, look, I'm kind of in your position. I'm currently trying to do what I'm doing. This is kind of what's working for me. People buy from people and people buy into people. So if you can help people, that will definitely grow your network and connections. Um, And I 100% resonate with you. The reason I'm doing this podcast is because I want to share those insights with as many SDRs as I can to help them out. There's no other goal for this. It's I want to make SDR successful. So I'm really appreciative of you joining in and sharing your knowledge with us. Um, And as we're coming kind of like wrapping up towards the end of the show, I would love to know, Nia, what would be like your three top tips that you would love to share with a younger version of yourself who's just about to embark on this SDR SaaS journey? Um, Yeah, definitely. So my first one would... Always, would be always be authentic. Um, you're constantly getting um, advice from trainers, coaches, leaders, colleagues, and they're so important and super helpful. And it's all coming from the best place. So definitely take those on board. But really, I think in the beginning, I was trying to just take it at face value and maybe I heard one of my colleagues um have an amazing call I would literally try and say exactly what they were saying but it just it's not Mm. you so it's really about taking the best parts of their call and putting it in your own words because you're totally going to resonate um with your prospect more if you're just being a human and injecting your own personality into that so I think that's really important um the second one would be list like Take yourself out of your comfort zone and listen to your calls. Um, mm. Like you were saying, there's so many SDRs who are uncomfortable listening to their calls or seeing themselves on video. But it's super important because you don't know where you're going wrong or um, what you're doing well and can replicate if you're not listening back. Everything's so different when you've got a bit of adrenaline in you and you're in that conversation. So going back and listening and listening to your colleagues' calls so you can see what they're doing well or what they could improve on is so important. And the last one, I think when you're an SDR, you can see yourself as a bit junior and entry level, but actually Mm. an SDR is such an important role for growing the company. So I would say, make sure that you're putting your input um, into meetings with different members of your company and marketing product, senior leadership, because you're the one who's customer facing and you're having that first contact with your prospects. So you really... um, you're really getting the voice of the customer. So it's so important that you're sharing that information with the rest of the team and really don't undervalue yourself because um, your role is super important for the success of the company. So definitely think they're my three pieces of advice. I think that is refreshing to hear. I really love it. So if I kind of get it right, it's kind of learn from other people as much as you can, but make it your own and like yeah. own your own style. And it takes a little bit of practice to your second point, like keep reviewing, like improve, see where you can get to. It's not about perfection. It's about progress. 
Uh, and equally, like you said, the SDR function is one, if my, in my personal opinion, one of the most important pieces of the SaaS company that we're working for. Make sure that your voice is heard. Like, don't be afraid to raise your hand, speak up and, and give your input. Did I get that right? Yeah, absolutely. You hit the nail on the head there. Sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nia. Um, so Nia, um, before we kind of like conclude, are there any special shout outs or mentions that you'd like to, to give on the show today? Well, I'd like to say, first of all, thank you, Neil, for having me on this podcast. It's been an amazing experience. And definitely to the sales leaders at Refract, um, Mark Akers, Richard Smith and Stuart Taylor, they've pushed us to create our own brand and to do things like this, put yourself out there and do things that aren't necessarily in your role. And I would definitely advise that other SDRs are doing things like that. It's not just about nine to five booking meetings, booking meetings. It's about developing how the professional world sees you um, because you might not be an SDR forever. Um, so it's about putting your name out there and doing different things, especially out of your comfort zone. So yeah, definitely to them. Love it. Nia, I'm definitely going to be expecting big things from you uh, in the coming future. And I'd love to have you uh, back as a guest on, on our show. Um, but again, thank you for being the guest. And um, I wish you all the best success in the coming months. Uh, and most importantly, Nia, happy selling. Thank you very much, Neil. It's been fab. <laughs>